Waiting for Facebook. I'm waiting for Facebook. Hello? <laughs> oh, my mic is live. Whoops. Well, hello. Welcome back to another 3D Hangout, episode 182. What was the name of the show again? Foot Switches and CAD. <laughs> We're going to take a look at Foot Switches, Circuit Python, Cute Baby Dinosaurs, and some more Lego parts. We'll do some shop talk. Take a close look at CAD parts. All this and more on, you guessed it, 3D Hangouts. 3D Hangouts. <laughs> Excellent. Hey everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I am Noah Ruiz, a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this show we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, and smash them together to make inter interesting projects. What a rough morning. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this live stream. We are live streaming, if you couldn't tell. Um, let's do some uh, shopkeeping. What is it? Housekeep, house cleaning. Yeah, it's Wednesday. We do the show every Wednesday, 11 a.m. We live stream multi, multi, multi simultaneously. Streaming across several different networks. The whole, the whole, the whole internet. Hello, internet. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm not nervous at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I, I broke it. <laughs> Looks like. Everybody is getting some Adabox 07 shipment confirmations from Great. the looks at the chat room. Keep that working while I fix our, <laughs> our stream. All right, that should be good. Quick shout out to everybody in the chat rooms. Yes, no. Looks like it's nice and lively over on YouTube. Shout outs to Stuff Kirby, Raphael, Acid, Gene, Liz, Good City DIY is in the house. Got it. Mattable, thank you all for joining this lovely morning. Yeah, we thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you guys Discord. coming on the live stream. <laughs> all right, let's just get right into the show. We got a lot of stuff planned, so let's stop dilly dallying and get straight into the coupon code. This week's coupon code is Zippy. It Zippy. gets you 10% off your order. If you want to place an order, please use the coupon code. Get yourself 10% off your order. We also have. Adafruit freebies. Go to adafruit.com slash free. You can get all the cool details and things there. Mm -hmm. So a couple of different tiers, depending on how much you spend. Yeah. So check that out. Adafruit daily. Wait. <laughs> adafruit.com slash free. Yeah. This went so well when we rehearsed it. I know. What's going <laughs> on, man? We also, got same, <clears throat> we also got same day delivery for people in the NYC area. That's right. Certain zip codes. It might not work today or tomorrow because we got snowstorms. Looks so. like we got first not day we, of spring. Not we, I'd say it as a general we. Our souls are there in New York. <laughs> uh, we have adafruitdaily.com, which is our daily newsletters. We just added a bunch of new cool stuff for circuit Python or just micro Python. So check that out. I think it's called Python for microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Um, 
huge shout out to Scott who's been uh, leading that. Mm -hmm. he's, he's been talking about it and adding some new features and things. We also have Adafruit newsletter, the new new newsletter, adafruit.com slash newsletter. <clears throat> you can sign up there. Remember, these are all uh, separate from your uh, accounts. So if you do have an account, you kind of have to opt in to subscribe for this. Yeah. Okay. I'm losing my voice. What happened? <laughs> <clears throat> this week's project. Let's just jump right into this week's project. It is not that. It's actually this. It's a foot switch, a USB foot switch. Here it is in the overhead. This is an entirely 3D printed foot switch. It looks like a foot switch. It smells like a foot switch. It sounds like a foot switch. And it operates exactly like a foot switch. So we've been yeah, using this Yeah, it operates like a USB controller. We've been using this to control camera when we do overhead shots for project uh, documentation. Correct. This is actually one of like the um, classic LadyAda.net projects is to make a, to hack a foot switch uh, to work as a camera trigger remote for doing overhead photography. I've, I've wanted to do this for quite a while now, um, but I didn't get around to it. So I finally had some, some cycles to, uh, to do this. Uh, so it works as a foot switch as Pedro was showing you. Um, it's two pieces and what you have here is a USB port for the Trinket M0. So let's go ahead and break this apart. So this is a pretty neat uh, sort of hinge that prints with no support material and doesn't require any additional hardware. Uh, if we look at some of the old foot switches or the foot switches that we carry in the shop, originally I was going to use that and just kind of create a custom bracket for it. But what I ended up doing, so this is the foot switch. It's, a, it's about seven to eight dollars. Uh, it's a really nice foot switch. I mean, it's got a like, chunk of metal mm -hmm. at the base, so it's weighed. It has a compression spring. But if you look on the inside, all that's really in there is this uh, micro switch, right? These micro switches are sort of the, the things that you see inside of arcade buttons and other things like that. That's really all that's in there. And there's plenty of room inside there to put a trinket. We actually have uh, several, I want to say like two or three projects that use this foot switch. Um, we have an Arduino version. We have uh, one that's more, uh, oh, it's a Bluetooth wireless version. So we mm -hmm. got a lot of different versions. Um, so I really wanted to make one that was fully 3D printed and didn't uh, require any additional hardware. So this is the Zippy switch. It's one of the um, three terminals. So you have normally open, normally closed, and your common down here. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, oh, it's just working. Uh, and then you have your little actuator here. So what you have is you actually already have a spring inside the body, um, which is what pushes this thing up. So you do need a little bit of uh, force to actuate it. So what's cool about the, the 3D printed hinge is that, again, it doesn't require any hardware and it's got like this dimple uh, feature, right? That's nicely um, at a 45 degree angle, which your most 3D printers can totally resolve. 45 degree angles. And then on this side, you have this sort of same feature, but it's being protruded. So when you mate them together, they create this kind of pivot point and they make this satisfying kind of click sound like that. Uh, so there's no spring in there, but you could add a spring if you want. Um, I added these little uh, spring holders that would hold it, uh, that would hold the spring uh, and kind of keep them uh, far apart from each other. Other thing you have in here is a L bracket that secures the micro switch to the base. And when I first designed this, um, you know, I got this, obviously I got this idea from the, the actual foot switch, the one that we carry in the shop. And I thought like, oh, I can probably just merge the two parts together. Why would I need to make a separate bracket? Then I'm 3D printing, you have that luxury of just making all sorts of crazy geometries. Um, so I did do that and then I realized, wait a minute, now I can't secure because of the slip, now I can't actually get my screwdriver in, <laughs> into the case. Uh, so you could do it from, the, from behind here, but then um, you would need a washer or something here. So there's, just, there's always reasons for design things, and um, I, I had to kind of learn that the hard way. <laughs> uh, another thing obviously you have here is the trinket. It's secured with these two machine screws. There are four standoffs that elevate the board, so it's a little bit up and raised from the base here. And of course you have this cutout here for the uh, micro USB cables. 
And I really like this project because all the wiring is just these two wires. You have your common ground and you have uh, pin zero. You could obviously change the pin uh, in, the, in the software, in the code. So that's really easy to do. And that's really it. I left this uh, feature here for the spring in case anybody needed it. But as you saw, I didn't really need it. Um, if you wanted to have more travel uh, to your foot switch, add a, a compression spring. Another cool thing about that, this is fully user parameter driven. That means uh, you, with a flip of a switch, you can, you can update this uh, one number and this would grow or shrink depending on the diameter of the compression spring. There are a lot of different compression springs out there. They all tend to have different um, diameters. So I would actually like to do a layer by layer on that later in the week, maybe for next week. Uh, you got these rubber buttons here, or rubber pads that actually ship with our Adafruit Metro boards, actually ship with these. Even the Arduino boards ship with these. Uh, we sell them separately as well. Um, I could have made the NinjaFlex thing, but I didn't really want to because I got these rubber pads. Might as well use them up. They work really well. It's not weighed down that much. Uh, that could easily be fixed by increasing the base thickness or adding a piece of metal or something. It didn't seem to be a problem yet. Um, another thing that is, come on, <laughs> that is kind of required is support material. Um, these sides over here actually don't require support material. The only thing that does require support material is this little feature over here, um, which you probably can't really see that well because my camera isn't focusing. Uh, so this is at some crazy angle. Uh, and then this whole shiny piece here is actually what is, uh, get, gets laid flat on the 3D printer bed. That's why it's all glossy. It was printed on a, a glass bed. Uh, yeah, so again, these over here don't need uh, support material. It's just this area here that needs support material because of the way the angles are. Um, yeah, another thing I had to accommodate for was when you actuate the foot switch, you can see that uh, this little cutout here on the top piece needs to kind of be a little bit bigger to accommodate for a USB cable. So that was one of the things I had to do. Another thing is um, this little square pad over here. This actually needed to be there in order to fully actuate uh, the little actuator, the nub here for the micro switch. So it's lined up perfectly in CAD um, and in the actual 3D print. So that's how that works, little actuator. All right, so that's kind of the demo of it. Um, it's, it does one, <laughs> one command. Uh, you can program it to do whatever command you want, whether you want a keystroke or a macro kind of combo, key combos, you can do that. Um, so let's take a look at the guide. Okay, so the really cool thing I, I like about this project is it's so simple, you just need two parts. You need the Trinket M0 and a micro switch, that's it. Um, so it, it ends up being the same cost of a single foot switch. So that's really cool, I kind of like that. Okay. Circuit diagram, I really like this circuit diagram. It is so clean and neat. <laughs> I drew the, uh, the micro switch in Photoshop. So uh, those, are <clears throat> those are nice. Um, I have all the labels broken out, but it's really, really simple. You have a common ground going into ground and you have normally open uh, terminal going into D, uh, D0, which you can change in the code if you want. Uh, but I broke it down here so any, anybody um, can reuse the circuit or, uh, yeah, reuse the circuit. Really cool thing about the software is the Adafruit Trinkets M0s now ship with CircuitPython in the HID library. So there's really not much uh, software setup you need to do. So that's really cool. I really, really like that. Um, but in case somebody has an older trinket um, that didn't ship with CircuitPython, all the links are here to upgrade the firmware, very, very easy to do. So here's the code. Um, I'll just say it, I don't really write code. I'm not a programmer, I'm more of a designer, but I was able to come in here and do a little bit of tweaking. Um, you do have the option to pair it with a control key um, if you want, but right now I just have it as the space bar because that's the actual key command for taking a photo using the EOS software for a camera. Um, another thing I did was I kind of reordered the, um, the code here so that the key presses happen on press instead of release. Pre our previous USB um, 
USB controller circuit Python projects are kind of backwards where the key presses will send on release. Now it's done on press. And that was just a matter of rearranging um, while not button value to the end instead of before the key press happens. So that's cool. That's about all I did. Again, not a programmer. <laughs> I was able to come in here and kind of decipher what's going on. Um, so that's awesome. And if you want to customize it, which I totally recommend you do, we have a key code list that has all of the key codes. Oh, it's actually right here already. So if you want a specific key code, um, you can uh, search it up here. We have just about every function key, escape key, um, the command keys, Windows keys. <clears throat> we are actually working on, we as the, the, the full circuit Python team, is working on uh, media keys. So play, volume, reverse, that sort of stuff. Media keys for playing media. That's coming in CircuitPython 3. Currently, it's not supported in CircuitPython 2 or 1. We also have mouse support, which is here listed as well. So if you want to do some mouse uh, button presses, uh, the mouse wheel also is there. So it's really cool. And there's some notes here about uh, US keyboards. Um, so for example, if you're using a French keyboard, it might be a little bit different. Uh, or a German <coughs> keyboard might be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind. So that's the software. Really straightforward and easy to manipulate. Talk about the 3D printing. Um, it's just three parts. We got the L bracket for the micro switch and the top and the bottom, well, backwards, top and the bottom uh, pieces. I put down the slice settings. I printed these on our Ultimaker 2 and 3 uh, using PLA from Melt Ink. I do talk about the support material. Uh, one of the things I noticed. Um, there's a feature in Cura called support overhang angle, which limits uh, <coughs> or, or, yeah, it lets you print, it lets you specify your overhang angle. So if you have anything that's over 60 degrees, it'll add support to those features. Uh, so that was really interesting because if you, I think by default it's set to 45, um, which would add more support material. If you increase that to 60 degrees, you save material and you save on printing time. So it just works out. And as you saw um, over on the overhead, you can see that the Ultimaker printers were able to resolve these 60 degree angles, no problem. So that's really cool. I have feature, or I publicly shared the Fusion 360 design source. Uh, so that includes the timeline and all the sketches and all the user parameters. Um, that I built into the design, so it's fairly easy to remix it or reuse it. Of course, the STLs are on Thingiverse in pin shape, so that's really cool. And after that, um, it, it goes into the wiring stuff. So I kind of walk you step by step on how long the wires need to be, um, little tidbits like that. So the assembly is really straightforward. It's just getting these two wires hooked up to uh, the trinket and to the uh, the leads on the uh, micro switch. Assembly is pretty straightforward. You do need some extra screws um, to, and some long extra screws to mount or to secure the micro switch to the L bracket. Um, so I have those listed out in the overview. Um, yep. And some shorter screws for mounting the actual L bracket. And then it's, re it's, it's really a matter of just kind of lining up the hinge points and then snapping them together. Um, Really neat. I actually um, really like the, uh, the, the top cover. I, when I first made it, I had an offset uh, from the lip of the base to the inner wall of the top. I had to, had to make it really large. It's a, actually a full millimeter of clearance <clears throat> because half of a millimeter was just too, too little where you would get some friction when you actuated. But now, because it has such a large offset, you can kind of see it there there's no friction happening, which is really nice. Because originally, uh, there had some friction there because they didn't have enough of an offset. So it's always uh, one of those things you don't know about until you actually print it. So again, no friction. Like real friction, not like that fake business friction. It's like real <laughs> friction. All right, so that's pretty much the guide um, and the project. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to use it well, document this project because it it's like meta. It's like, well, I'm building the switch. I can't use the switch. I only built one because I didn't want to have like two switches laying around. But it's fairly easy to put together. Yeah. 
Chippy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can do a lot of different things with uh, the foot switch. Uh, again, I'm just using it for one particular thing. Maybe we'll find some more uses for it. Yeah, a good uh, comment from Liz was saying she wanted to do a guitar stomp box for it. So like a guitar oh, pedal or something yeah. like that would be cool. Totally, yeah. And um, also how many Reusing tries? the mechanics would be really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of room in there for more circuitry. You could make it battery powered. You can make it wireless if you added a, a Bluetooth module. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, because it's all 3D printed and designed in Fusion with parameters, it is really easy to come in there and modify it. Um, it, I, I really worked hard to make the timeline uh, comprehensive, so it's like chronological. I'm gonna have fun with the layer by layer because I get to kind of showcase that. That's, that that makes me feel good. <laughs> I think that's all I got. And then, how many tries did it get you to get all of the um, parts in the right position? Not a lot, actually. When you design everything, all the parts. In Fusion, like in your CAD package, when you design all the parts, you clearly see where all the uh, all the intersections might lead, where um, things might look. So I'm a really big advocate of like design every part in Fusion. That way, you can see if there's any uh, intersections or things like that. Hmm. Um, uh, two or three, two or three tries, because originally I actually was using a metal axle from the switch. So it took a couple tries. Yeah. It did. You figured it out, okay. and then you completely redesigned it. <laughs> That's usually the case. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so here's the original switch. So there's this giant metal axle that holds these two pivot points. Um, yeah. And I've, you know, I, I originally thought that the PLA wouldn't be strong enough or flexible enough to kind of pop those features together, the, the dimples that create the pivot point in the hinge. Um, but surprisingly, it's working out really well. Um, I guess because I made it thick enough and because the shell of each piece is under two millimeters, it's not too thick. Um, this switch here that you're watching is the original switch that we carry in the shop. Um, that has like a three to four millimeter wall thickness, so it's kind of thick. So I don't think it would be able to do the, that sort of flexing. But because it's 3D printed and completely parametric, you can change the shell thickness as much as you want. But just taking this original switch and taking it apart and really looking at all the features and trying to figure out why they made these design decisions is huge, helpful, because it saved me a lot of time um, from having to design it all from scratch. I mean, I did design it from scratch, but obviously it got inspired and kind of followed, basically like tracing, tracing. Um, all the features and geometry um, from this switch. So it was really useful to have the switch, take it apart, and um, kind of redesign it in Fusion. Um, but then you kind of strip away some of the things you don't want, like, like the hardware. I don't need the spring. I don't need the metal axle. Because originally I was going to be like, yeah, just buy the uh, switch and then take the spring and the axle from it and the switch from it. But it's like $7.50, $7 which is almost the price of the trinket itself. So I was like, Let's just do the whole thing. Maybe I can make the hinge without any hardware. So that's it. Yay. Coupon code Zippy. And then Kirby is commenting that he's still trying to look for a good two position switch so you can focus and then half press and then take the picture with a full press. Yeah. I do believe, I forget which one, one of our learning guys yeah. actually does show how to do that. I don't that. know if one of our learning guys does, but Becky Stern recently did one for Instructables. Uh, mm, check that yes. one out. Um, it is a really good uh, look at how you can do that um, and a uh, really good resource um, on how to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how to simulate it in the uh, Circuit IO, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. from Autodesk, which is like an online simulator for uh, circuits. Yeah, that's really cool. So a MIDI sustain. Uh, pedal would be pretty cool. That would be awesome, a sustain pedal. I think it like holds down the note while you get to play other notes. Is that what the sustain is? I think that's what it is. Like It holds down the note. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Metable is saying maybe two switches slightly offset from each other. Two switches? Mm -hmm. Hmm. But there are special switches. Like, what do they call it? Like double throw, double switch, double throw switches. Yeah. 
Oh, here's a good uh, question about using Cura supports. Um, did we have to sand the bottom of the model afterwards? He can't get the supports off clearly. I think you you know a little bit more about it than I do. I it so is if a you little... want to jump into a screencast, you can Let's go over that. to the. Um, he can help me fix Z, my settings because I do the, need to change it a little. The bit. Z distance for support material. Okay, it's opening. Hold on. There uh, I usually switch it to. I think the default is like 0.2, I believe. Okay. And that's how far away your supports are touching the, uh, or are interfacing with the actual model. And if you go into Cura. All right, so we're in Cura. Down. We're gonna go scroll down to support materials, which is right over here. Yep. If and you, I, if there's some things you don't see, click on that gear on the gear icon, and you get all of these settings mm -hmm. here. So you check the ones that you want to use. Um, so which one do I need? Support. Z distance? Yeah, so the Z distance uh, by default is going to be at point 0.1, which is like pretty close. This is really close. You're going to fuse helpful. it together, which is why you're having those problems. So I would increase it up to either 2 or 3, depending on what the geometry I'd of it is. I'd probably start with 2, because mm -hmm. then two. you'll have some saggy um, features, so mm -hmm. maybe 2. You'll it was pretty close for mine, I got, I got to say, on mine, I, I didn't sand it. But I did have to kind of Pretty apply close. some force to and you use the, close, the flush yeah. snips to kind of clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it is a little rough, right? I think uh, with PVA support material it probably would have been better. It looks super clean. That's, yeah. that's only for dual extruded or burns. increasing or increase the, the Z distance. Support distance, yeah. Yeah. So about 0.2, 0 0.3 is good. Okay. But default it was 0.1. Yeah, I I printed it with 0.1. Fuzzy. Yeah. I gotta say, kind of is uh, the pattern is zigzag, which you're you kind of standard. You can play with those patterns uh, for the next project we're about to talk about, the little Lego Ada bot. I had to use, I believe, triangles for that because it generated the most cleanest uh, features on his face. So, right, uh, just play with those to see what support material comes off the cleanest based on your geometry. And remember the only part that needs support in this particular project is the top cover, not the bottom cover. Mm -hmm. And another thing you'll notice is you see where it says place support? You see where it says everywhere? I like to put just touching the build because then it'll try to add supports to my little features here. Which you really don't need. I don't really need. Well, it, actually I take that back because I changed the overhang angle to 60. So it's only going to look at mm -hmm. features um, that are over 60 degrees. So let's take a look at that. I'll hit the prepare button. Um, and then I really like the layer view, which in my opinion is, is one of the best things about the Kira uh, updates. Uh, so you'll see that the support material is only touching that little spot here, not those sort of edges here on the wing. Um, then you can kind of, I'm looking at it underneath so you can get a good look at the way the supports are. And the density is really the infill density of the support material. It's set to what, 15 by default? I didn't change that. That was pretty standard. Look at those extreme overhangs. See how that works there? So that works like that. You could also change the, um, the geometry, um, the angle here, if you want. There. So. I hope that helps people out with supports because uh, it is a bit of a, I want to say art form, but not really. It's just like, you really think, just kind of think. It just takes thoroughly. a little bit to understand yeah. how. Right. And there's the so many works. settings. Um, the ones that work for you are, yeah. So there you go. So that support distance, yeah. You kind of see there's a little bit of a gap there, which is good. All right. Any questions or anything while we're here? Maybe some tips that I don't know about. Uh, somebody also in the Discord is asking basically the same question. Okay. How about to supports? not leave huge marks on the bottom. Yeah. There you go. Increase your Z distance. Got it. You could also do the oh, same cool. thing with X like and that. Y. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where is it? Here? Right underneath it. X yeah. and Y distance. Mm -hmm. So if, it's, if Ooh, you're finding that seven. it's too <laughs> close or too far away, you can either lower that or increase it. Right. Normally what happens is when you pull the support off, like it comes off as a whole chunk as opposed mm -hmm. to bit by bit. This one did have bit by bit and it's definitely because of that Z distance was set too low yeah. by default. So you do want to change it depending on your setup. All right, cool. I think we can go ahead and move on to this week's what are we prototyping? Sure. Real quick coupon code, <laughs> Zimby. Oh, cool. Uh, Slicer has a similar layer view. 
Okay, sweet. I like the shadows. Like, yeah, Cure has a little bit of extra rendering niceness. Oh, wow. Talk about price difference in something that Imagination of Form saw. He's saying he saw a Bluetooth version being sold for 80 bucks. I believe the uh, wow. assistive tech ones are like $300. Which for is, Bluetooth? Yeah. Maybe. Which is why we are uh, doing such a hard push on trying to make these, uh, or bring an awareness to the DIY nature of what is essentially just one button right. or one switch. One switch. <laughs> a dollar should not cost $300. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kirby's saying that he likes two dense layers on top of supports and then the flat X-Acto blade uh, peels it off. off so like that. to enable that, it's called interface support layers <clears throat> inside of Cura. And it's in the same uh, area in the cog wheel. You just have to enable it. Cog wheel. And it is uh, support. You can also search up here too. Yeah. There's a little search interface box. support. You'll see it if you just keep scrolling. <clears throat> there it is. Enable support interface, Ooh. and that'll lay down the uh, flat, uh, additional like separation of the support and the actual model. Nice way to do that really? as well. So yeah, it adds I mean, it all depends on ge the geometry too. So so would I would I benefit from using a interface? Maybe, player? maybe. Only one way to find out. Spread <laughs> out. <laughs> Let's spread it out right now. <laughs> cool. Thanks for that, Kirby. All right, let's get a good tip here. there. Yeah, that's a good tip, man. So moving on to what are we prototyping? Continuing what are you prototyping, with Pedro? The super cute little Adabot Lego. We talked about, I think this will be the third or fourth week now. First, we showed it off. Really? The uh, prototype. A couple weeks ago, then uh, I think last week I showed the dual extrusion version of this. Super cute, fully uh, Lego compatible. All the parts all work with all minifigs and all that. And then we showed off what this was supposed to be. It's supposed to be a um, companion to 007 Adabox. It's supposed to be a camera cover for your laptop or desktop monitor, wherever you may have a laptop uh, web camera. It's supposed to cover it up. And as we're playing with this, it turned into a, holy crap, we can now dress up our computers with a bunch of Lego pieces on top. Because if you didn't already, right? Like, yeah. now you can have a, a little bit more uh, flexible way to do it, I guess. Well, we're, what we were doing was using the uh, Lego strip uh, that we did last year, uh, mm -hmm. using Ninja, Fu Ninja Flex to make a nice little clingy characteristics on the back here so it could stick onto glass, but it was only glass, so it would only work on monitors, and you couldn't hold too much weight on it. You know, like a minifig and a couple blocks, but this you're able to just do a whole little scene on top of your uh, desktop, which, you know, work areas, uh, offices, uh, practice that is, you know, routinely done. You'll notice the that there's different sizes. Different sizes, lengths, also for different uh, computers. So, uh, of course, Adabot acts as a nice little cable holder as well. And mm -hmm. this will be released next week. Nice way to dress up the computer or have uh, nice little helpful things like having Adabot hold your charge cable. And of course, uh, if you're like in an office area and you're, you know, bring your laptop to a meeting or something like that, mm -hmm. You can easily confuse on whose laptop is who. If it goes to sleep, you can easily tell with one of these. Yeah. So super cool little uh, functional part or project that turned into a total, you know, like, like super fun being able to dress your computer up, customize. It's fun. People are really liking it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think whenever so cool. we share it, people are like, wow, where's the STL? Guess what? A spoiler Next alert. Week. Oh yeah, we Thomas can just say spoiler alert. Yeah, we can just release the Fusion 360 files if you want to. Just download these because I already looks did. Like <laughs> I was okay, just trying good. to get to. Good. So I did a layer by layer. Let's go ahead and mosey over to the layer by layer segment. Oh yeah. Uh, parametric no Lego parts seem yes. to be really popular. So if you haven't seen that and you're into uh, CAD design, check out the playlist, our layer by layer playlist, uh, Fusion 360 tutorials on the YouTubes. Um, people seem to like it. It's a really interesting way to create uh, parametric user-driven um, features so that you can create um, these type of parts. Um, a lot of people uh, really like taking, taking that to the next step and doing, applying it to other designs, which mm -hmm. uh, I'm really happy to see. It came in super helpful because of the way that the tolerances work bef between 
doing a dual extrusion part and a single extrusion part, the tolerances for the pegs actually changed, yeah. which is strange since we're using nothing but Ultimaker's now, as you can see in the new background. Um, yeah, there's we tolerance differences between nozzles. dual extrusion and nozzles. Yeah, point four nozzle versus a point two five nozzle. Mm -hmm. All of these have been printed with a point two five nozzle. Yeah. So really, all of this is, I think, possible, and you get much more accuracy with a point two five nozzle. Mm -hmm. Although we've seen it done with a point four. Yes. Um, it is possible. Definitely get so much detail in the tiny little pupils in his eyes and his mouth right. and all that. So super clean. We will talk about all of the CAD Yeah, we're, we're going to spend the whole show just talking about uh, features, parametric features yeah. and Lego tolerances. Mm -hmm. We will check that out next week. Yeah. But you can, you can do it right now. Oh, and you can download um, the original uh, design source for the, uh, the Lego toppers. Mm -hmm. Not Adabot yet though, Pedro hasn't shared that one yet. I can share maybe it you show can, you Maybe if you bribe him or something. <laughs> with a I'll copy. just release it. Good way to catch any um, uh, inaccuracies or whatever. So super cool, cute little Adabot. And I need to put it away because it's so cute. I can't stop playing with it. Uh, take it away from me. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Give us a minute to. Uh... <laughs> so you're talking about the labor right there. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's Shop Talk. Shop Talk. Speaking of CAD stuff, I finally did it, guys. I finally released all of my CAD parts on GitHub. Woohoo! So if you go to adafruit.com slash GitHub. One of the most GitHub, frequently wait. asked questions, can I get a part for, or an CAD for that part that we're using? Yeah, can I get the trinket CAD? Usually yes, we've embedded it into can. the projects and had people have to dig it out. Uh, we've done the digging for you and have put it all inside of this uh, repo here that you can grab. They're all Fusion 360 files, but you can uh, import them and then export uh, a step file or any other sort of file like yeah. format that you might need. Yeah, Fusion is pretty awesome because it lets you export uh, sort of uncommon things too, like uh, what was it, SketchUp, Google SketchUp. Well, I know a lot of people like that, woodworkers like that. Mm -hmm. um, SolidWorks as well, I believe, which is Lots really nice. Lots of different nice. formats you can go from. Yeah. Because really we've all seen. Just a quick note on uh, the naming convention here. Uh, you'll notice that there's numbers in the beginning of the file name. And that's the PID. That's the product ID. So if you go to adafruit.com slash product slash 2756, that'll give you the PID. That's, mm -hmm. that's the direct link to uh, the part. So you got a teensy board is what I'm kind of looking at. Yeah. Batteries, high TFDs. Some of them are parametric, like mm -hmm. the NeoPixel strip. Uh, for example, the POV wand, the point of persistent vision wand that I made with CircuitPython. Increase the size of it. You could, I mean, it's tailored to that project because I can say exactly how many pixel count I want and the geometry will update the whole part, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Um, so that's in there. And I, the reason why I'm sharing the Fusion 3D file and not a step file is because it includes the timeline. The timeline is is really the secret sauce that shows you step by step what features and what sketches are driving the whole mm -hmm. design. So you kind of, set, it's, it's kind of open. Sort of like looking at code like the to source. see what, yeah. how it's written or what functions are yeah, uh, so making it Yeah, so you can step through the design and see exactly what's, what's making it happen. And that's all the files here. They're all like that. It's pretty neat. Um, so as I create more, I'll be sure to keep updating the repo. Uh, I see a couple people have favored it and a couple people are watching it, which is really nice to see. Uh, we're getting 404s on the links on YouTube. How do we... It's YouTube. It's not our fault. It's just something that YouTube does. I'm sorry about so that. Probably github.com slash Adafruit might work. And then you can go... It should be the latest thing that was... Pushed. Any link is like kind of getting crushed by uh, YouTube. Mm. So I apologize for that. Mode. You can search for it. Just type in CAD parts. Yeah. But anyway... Um, as you can see it here, CAD parts, Adafruit underscore CAD underscore parts. There's some capitals there, so you got to be wary of that. Yeah. Uh, John K is saying that his links are working fine. Okay. Okay, you found Some it. people, uh, so, I, I, we get it every it's week weird, now. Yeah, yeah some, some of the YouTubes are messing up our links, so bear with us there. Yeah, cool. Yay. So that is uh, an update. Uh, use them as you'd like. There is accurate as I can make them. Some mm -hmm. of them are direct rips from uh, Eagle CAD, like the exact same board actual, dimensions. Yeah, like what the is ones actually, that's being actually being manufactured. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice. Okay, next up. 
Next up Still is one that uh, made it in here just last night. Really cool firmware update to the Ultimaker 3s. That's right. Keeping in theme with the assistive tech uh, we've been talking about earlier, they added the functionality to plug in a uh, HID device like a mouse and use it to control the menu, the onboard menu on the Ultimaker 3s. Yeah. And we have a demo of that actually working. So the Ultimaker 3s have a USB port on the front. That's really cool because you can do a lot of things other than just data, uh, like you know an SD card or really a USB stick. So you can plug in a, a regular USB mouse. We tried one of our fancy Logitech MX series uh, mice. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work because it requires a driver because there's all these buttons and things. Um, but our standard USB mouse that's like classic USB works really well. And Apparently, there's a, a hidden Easter egg. If you plug in a keyboard, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. What is it? <laughs> Some sort of D&D game. It's, sort of I D &D? think that's been in there for a while, Not actually. D &D. Something else. I've never seen it and was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, what I don't like is that I wish they would give you the option to either turn that on or just use the keyboard, you know, the up and down arrows. Yeah, so we that would be really use useful. The keyboard. It'd be nice if, um, yeah, if it gave me an option. Because one of the things that I want to use it for, when you're actually sending a print job to the Ultimaker 3 over Wi-Fi, it'll ask you to physically touch a button on the machine. To While I'm on the, the other side of the room, room sending yeah. the print, it's like I'm running back and forth to, you know, just to, to say, start hey, the print. start the print. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So it would be nice if I had a button that would just, you know, hit the button and have it go. <laughs> Yeah. Because I've already verified that I've removed the print. It's like, come yeah. on, yo. Yeah, and a lot of folks like it too because uh, the, the touch wheel is a little kind of hard. It sometimes At certain angles, if you don't have your thumb right yeah. on that little It requires some indent. dexterity, so if you don't have that, um, it's really useful to be able to use a mouse or something similar. Yeah. Or if you're quickly trying to cancel a print or something like that, it can, uh, you can select the wrong uh, option. So. It'd be nice if you had a dedicated button to just, you know, yeah. so this is cancel or whatever. Uh, this is just uh, for the Ultimaker 3. Where's that thing? Right there. Yeah, yeah it is. So. Because the Ultimaker 2s don't have a USB port mm -hmm. on the front. So that's so a, hopefully that's this nice. inspires, I don't know, like the uh, Did we mention print. that this was from the community? Yeah, yeah. So right in there it says this is possible because of the community. It was a, a community suggested uh, feature that was added in. So hopefully some things like this inside of... Uh, Octoprint can be added, maybe? If it isn't already? Yeah. Well, it's already on the computer, so. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, just a quick little, oh, cool. We tried it out, and it worked. Yeah. OK. And then moving on to this week's Time Lapse Tuesday. Yep, we if you didn't loaded, see the video, here should have loaded is. up how to pronounce this. Because yeah. this whole time I was calling it. Source. It's not an ankylosaurus. It it's is a from the ankylosaurus family. Family, but it's actually called a u u u plophophallus. U plophophallus. I just want to call it ephalophallophagus. <laughs> Super cute little three D uh, dual color uh, dino print from uh, Thingiverse. What's the uh, info? I have it here. Let the video run. <laughs> uh, so tell me about the print. Ultimaker 3. Printed with uh, Melt Ink PLA. Uh, I don't know how long it took to print because the settings are in front of me. But they are in the video, which we'll replay here in a second. Euphocephalus, says uh, Dave Smith. Oh, they spelt it out? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here are the slice settings. Uh, I know they go pretty quick. So it took about five hours. Fairly medium-sized part with a 0.2 layer height, 20% infill um, in, in that. It looks like there are tree supports, the experimental uh, type of support material that, that you the... get from Cura. It's called tree support. You want to talk about that? Yeah, so the main reason I printed this was to test out the tree supports. I wanted to see what the support uh, interfaces uh, were like. And if you take a look at the overhead, you can see exactly where the, where the little branches were touching underneath this cute little dino. Um, unfortunately, I can't really get this off. It's sort of fused yeah. in there, but you can uh, definitely see how these interact. Uh, I think there is the ability to adjust the Z support. I just didn't. I just left the uh, default settings on there. And that's what it looks like. 
Okay, cool. Not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Um, can you get closer? Let's get a really close look at it. There you go. So you can see here how the contamination, the contamination is really at a minimum here. Yeah. Um, you got the one layer right by his eye right there. Okay, a little closer there. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. So. Um, point 0.2 layer height, it could have done a, a 100 microns. I should have done 100 um, microns, it would have came out so much better. But I wanted to... We wanted something pretty quick. I mean, it still took five hours to yeah. print. You see the overhangs right here. You can see the overhangs there. A little bit of contamination there. Overall, oh. though, uh, one more right there. <laughs> Where's the yeah. ugly side, as people would say? Uh, there really isn't one. Usually it's one of the sides. At the bottom, but, I guess. Yeah. yeah. His feet. But excellent job of the tree support yeah. feature. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, I like it. So huge shout out to uh, the design team Thinker Thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so they published this on Thingiverse. It's a full colored model. I believe it was printed like perhaps with Shapeway surface, uh, service. Yeah, because it looks look like sandstone. Yeah. It looks like sandstone to me. You just got that look, right, of sandstone. Mm -hmm. It's a little matted. It's not really glossy or anything. Um, yeah. So this and is uh, pretty much an advertisement for this really cool video game that lets you do uh, 3D modeling of right. like yeah. custom models, like I guess. It's like an Android app, I believe. It's a Google Play Store mm -hmm. app. So it's really, it's really interesting, actually. If you take a look at the design there's behind this. So they do a lot of open source uh, tabletop games. Yeah, uh, open board game initiative. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to design your own professional board game, or play amazing cre uh, creations of others, makes it easy. Sweet. A lot of interesting designs here as well. Yeah, go ahead and check out their page. Very cool. So shout out to you folks. A couple of robots. If you, if you scroll down a little bit more, you also have a couple of other dinos. Uh, one thing to mm. note as well, these dinos are not separated for dual extrusion. I actually went inside of Mesh Mixer and uh, separated all of these little parts so they can be dual extruded. Yeah. Next time, do like a screencast so we can like, oh, fast forward yeah, through it. Oh, yeah, that would have been a good um, idea. Because that it was did some work, quite, wasn't it? It took a little bit to separate all these. Yeah, I actually don't know how to do that in Mesh Mixer. Um, so that'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. So I'll upload the parts and uh Oh, yeah, we'll have to have upload to this as these. a remix because the file is not like this. Mm -hmm. um, a bit of work revolved to uh, paint select and, and kind of pull the things apart. Are they separate. actually... Embedded? Are the parts somehow embedded, or is it like just flat on there? No, it's a little bit embedded, so mm -hmm. it is uh, touching just a little bit. Sweet. Okay. Because that's useful mm -hmm. to to fuse the parts together. Really nice. Kind of have a, an offset there. Sweet. All right. So uh, we'll upload that uh, remix uh, mm -hmm. later. Yeah. And uh, great, great stuff there. All right, cool. Let's keep on moving. We're running out of time, so let's oh. kind of run through this. We got a video game contest that we are sponsoring. This is week number three, I believe. We got 17 days left to enter this video game design contest. Um, basically, design a prop from your favorite video game for a chance to win a 3D printer, uh, another 3D printer, or some Adafruit fun bucks. Um, so all the rules and stuff are here. Very cool judges. Check it out. It is from Pinshape, pinshape.com. I have a link in the description already of this video, so you can check it out. Um, it ends April 7th, so get on that. And if you want some inspiration, we have quite a few cosplay 3D printed props that you can take a look at. You can steal the circuit, remix the code, uh, have your way with it, so there you go. Okay, now we're going to do some community makes. This, this week we have some we've cool got a makes. couple of them this week. Yep, we're going to run through them a little bit quickly and focus on running through it real quickly. <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, okay. First up, we got a mini instrument. This is using Adafruit's trellis uh, and some other circuits. Uh, so, this is a learning guide that we put together, and Thingiverse user uh, Danake came out with this or, or pushed, pushed a Oh, well, look at those. I didn't even notice these. They're mm -hmm. nice. Little Tall pots. Uh, pots yeah. Yeah. Tall pot switches. Really cool. Uh, really nice. He also has, a, I guess, some code he wrote. Sweet. He wrote oh, some code. sequence layer. Awesome. Printed on a CR10. Awesome. Very cool. OK. We got a weather station that was posted by Viacard. He posted it and seems to be liking it. Well, printed on an Anycube 
Any cubic i3 mega. It's it's fun looking at the printers because like there's so many printers now. Yeah. I've never heard of this printer, so it's cool. It's working out. And you put a couple other pictures of it, so I'm glad to see it because a lot of people are like, hey, the thing's too too thin, so I remixed it, which I encourage. But mm -hmm. it's definitely nice to see it works as is. Definitely update it for your needs. Hey, that's the Adafruit Feather Box and Clothy Purpose uh, thing. Let's see what um, Gorm used his. He printed this, paired it with the uh, Feather 32U4 Basic Pro with the rotary encoder to create a USB HID volume knob mm. for his desktop PC. Very nice. That's awesome. And he used some screws and um, using some Velcro tape to mm. stick it to the monitor. So very awesome. cool. Yes, that's exactly what this is for. So all sorts of different projects are possible with the Feather Box. Very good use of that. We got some cosplay stuff. This is the Master Shield, the Highland Shield from the video game series Legend of Zelda. This is a massive shield that you can 3D print in two pieces and put them together. Pager designed this uh, a couple years ago and he printed it on a Hypercube. This person here, PRZ. C on Thingiverse posted yeah, cool. this make. Very, very nice photo. I like um, how well the seams. That's uh, the most challenging hiding. part. How do you hide the seams? Um, that's a skill in itself. Mm -hmm. And painting. Yeah. And the very freaking nice. Master Sword as well, mm -hmm. which is companions perfect. Mm -hmm. Look at the detail on the Master Sword. Yeah, it's it. great. Uh, printed again on a Hypercube printer. So that's pretty neat. Okay, we got some cool stuff. We got an update from Liz Clark. Blitz City DIY. She recently created her first PCB. This is for her thermal camera Raspberry Pi project. So this is a really great example of like how you can get into PCB design. Uh, is like the best way to do it. She mm -hmm. used Adafruit's EagleCAD library, which we you encourage to, to everybody to at least check yeah. out, open it up, see how things uh, like operate and work inside yeah, there. Yeah, so you can make a a simple, relatively simple. Um, add-on for your projects. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to wire, you know, four to six different wires, you it's can the trace them out. Way to, yeah. to, for a PCB design yeah. for that, yeah. So very, very awesome update. I really like the style of the video as well. So Liz, awesome work. Mm -hmm. And I think she'll be selling it on Tendi maybe? Oh, awesome. As an add-on so folks can recreate cool. the project. So check it out. She is on YouTube. Check it out, weekly content, mm -hmm. Blitz City DIY. Link is down in the description. Super, super we cool. got some other awesome guides on the learning system. This one is a con badge, a convention badge using Circuit Playground Express. This is from the lovely Sophie Wong. She is having a lot of fun with her new laser cutter. That's the Glowforge laser cutter. It's out, it's getting shipped to folks, and it's working. That's really good to know. Uh, this is a fantastic design. Um, a, it's a python snake wrapping around the, the Circuit Playground Express. The Adafruit logo is like kind of backed in there. You got this really nice um, edge lit acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, Cat lovely photography. Oh, I love <clears throat> this guide so much. Like so if you, oh man. So you, if you go into a uh, little bit later into the guide, it has like this comic book feel of the it way does. that she did the like, layout. The layout so I am totally excellent. stealing the way that she did the layout for this. She's using the this is table, ready for the table element magazine. to do the side by side. Just yes. a little bit more down. I am. I just want to see make code. Really great use of make code. How you can drag and drop code blocks using mm -hmm. Microsoft's uh, make code um, software. It's it's all done on the browser, which is freaking awesome. Let's go to the assembly part. This, this is, is what you're talking, talking about. Yeah. So tell me why you like this. Just the it looks like a panel layout in a comic book. So I like her using the table element for this. I usually use like the slide element, which uh, tr I try to compact all the things, yeah, but I like it. the way it's like all nicely yeah. uh, spread out. It gives you a nice um, like flow of the layout to follow the instructions to build this. Look how clean cool. these photos are. You see that puff of smoke there? You know how hard that is to do? How did you do that, Sophie? Did you, did you get your own like foot switch too? Or do you set the, the, the timer to, uh, to 10 seconds and then wait for the camera to stabilize? Like, that's what we do and that's why I made the foot switch. So excellent job. Um, she showed it off on Show and Tell last week. Mm -hmm. And just generally mm -hmm. great, great work. Very cool. Okay. We have a really cool guide from Aaron St. Blaine, better known as the Pixel Fairy, mm -hmm. Fire Pixel Fairy. Um, she made a really awesome tutorial in Fusion 360 and how she put together this flower lampshade. And uh, it's a really, uh, really great tutorial. You can check it out. 
It's, it's using, using sculpting, uh, sculpting environment. Which is, I gotta say, it's not easy to use. So it's really good insight uh, on how uh, to make manifold designs that don't like mm -hmm. break. Because that's yeah. what always happens yeah, to me. It's very easy to have those. Yeah, like the the geometries you just like go through each other. Yeah, and uh, very very cool design. So check it out. It's like a 22 minute video, I believe, mm -hmm. on exactly step by step how to do this. So it's really really nice and very cool. It's also driven with user parameters too, yes, so it's parametric. Yes, yes. So for so folks that have different light bulb sockets, mm -hmm. uh, can change it up. Yeah, all of our uh, layer by layers have been very detailed and using uh, user parameters to yeah. adjust settings. So definitely check out some of the past ones as well. Sweet. And I want to give a shout out to Lon. Lon makes. Um, he does some streaming as well and some content. He um, actually did his own foot he switch. He made his own foot switch. Look at it. It's the year of the foot switch. <laughs> actually, I can leave the uh, volume. So here it is working. It's a little bit different design, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it is using a micro switch. I think the circuit, though, like, uh, um, is, is broken outside of the foot switch, which is interesting. Well, guess what he's using it for? He's using it as a scene switcher for OBS, for the oh. open broadcast software. Very cool. So Very he's handy. got the file. Um, and I believe he has, uh, oh yeah, so all the tips for post-processing and all nice. that works really awesome. So shout out to Lon for publishing that. And it looks like it's Fusion. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. Fusion 360. So it looks like another, I like it because I don't think it needs supports because it's all flat like that. It's mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Very good. I even like the little Vernoy sort of design on the sides. Oh yeah, that does that. look cool. Sweet. Very nice. Yeah, and he's got his logo on there too. Very, very cool. All right, well, that is all the projects we wanted to share. If you guys have any projects you'd like to share with us, we will post it up on the blogs. Just hit us up at any of the social links up above. I'm at Ekin, Pedro's at VideoPixel, or you can just email support at Adafruit.com. That's right. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We are getting close to the end of the show. If you guys have any questions, any general comments, let us know. Now's the time to do it. I got some last uh, housekeeping things to do. We have some shows tonight at 7.30 Eastern Standard, well, Eastern Time now, since we have daylight savings here in the wacky states of America. We have uh, 7.30 p.m. ET, um, the show and tell. So that's a chance by. for folks from be, uh, across the globe mm -hmm. to come on and share the projects, what they're working on. It could be things that they want to work on. It can be retro tech, all sorts of stuff. All ages are welcome. It's It's a... Uh, what, what does Phil say? You can bring your, your granddaughter too because it's a safe zone. Mm -hmm. um, Ask Engineer will happen tonight as well at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Full hour of Lamar and Phil. We got some new products, some Maker news, um, Raspberry Pi news, some Arduino um, news, Circuit Python news. Some secret. New, new news. Projects we're <laughs> working on. Say that. New, new news. Secret projects we're working on? Mm -hmm. I don't even know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then tomorrow, don't forget to uh, catch John Park's workshop. Yep. Last week, John was taking a look at <coughs> software-defined radio stuff. So looking at frequencies, yes. listening to the scanners, mm -hmm. and the PLE scanners and stuff. Very awesome hackery stuff. It works well with the 007 Ada box. That is exactly what all these are, yeah. yeah. So definitely check it out. He'll be doing a lot more cool uh, little prank type Pranks projects. Yeah, it's really it's, cool. It's coming up. It, residential prankster. Yeah. Mystery. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for supporting Adafruit, of course. You put your order in, all these lovely people will work hard to ship that order to you. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of snow happening right now, so there might be some delays. I just want to say it. I know it's all sunny and whatever looking in this photo, but it's actually really cold. It's very, very cold. <laughs> so don't be, uh, yeah, it's cold. I hope it's a good summer. Remind everybody, today's coupon code is Zippy. Gets you 10% off your order. Works on everything except subscriptions and gift certificate, and it expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. This is a zippy. Get your order done in a zippy. I think it's it for this weekend. I need a haircut. Yeah, we need to get one after the show, yeah. after lunch or something. We're terrible. Thank you all for joining every week. We'll be here next week. Another cool project. And as always, don't forget to make a great day. See you guys. Peace. Play the song.